Thank you very much. Good afternoon. My name is William Taylor. I am the police superintendent in the city of Lowell. I'd like to thank uh, all the members in the media and um, also all the public that uh, came out this morning, uh, excuse me, this afternoon, to see this demonstration and to um, be with us as we continue our efforts against uh, a public safety threat in the city of Lowell and certainly the rest of the Commonwealth um, related to illegal fireworks. Um, recently, in the city of Lowell, we have seen a significant increase in the number of disturbance calls related to illegal fireworks in our city. There have been 111 fireworks calls in the last two months uh, in the city of Lowell. And that's, those are calls that uh, first responders, like you see behind me, police and fire, uh, fighters, have to respond to in our city um, for illegal fireworks, mostly in the evening hours, mostly related to some kinds of disturbances in our communities. Um, it also is a significant drain on public safety resources that could be better utilized in other areas. Recently, the Lowell City Council enacted a city ordinance which makes it illegal in the city of Lowell to possess or use fireworks. That local ordinance carries a $300 fine. The Lowell Police Department intends to aggressively enforce that ordinance um, in, the, in the coming days and weeks. Um, going forward, we've also instituted a plan where the police department teams up with firefighters uh, and our crime an analyst unit to identify repeat locations um, that are then visited by a team of police and firefighters uh, in the days after the repeat incidents come in so that we can conduct inspections and make sure that the, uh, the problem is abated before uh, continued calls for service have to be generated for those addresses. So far those efforts have um, produced some significant results in some of the more uh, troubled locations in the city. What I'd like to do at this point is I'd like to bring forward the State Fire, fire Marshal Stephen Cohen, who's going to uh, discuss the dangers related to illegal fireworks in the Commonwealth. Thank you very much. Thank you, Superintendent. And I'm very pleased to stand with you today uh, and the District Attorney uh, to support your efforts to educate the public and enforce our state's fireworks laws. You know, thank you for your, your efforts to put this event uh, together today, along with the DA and along with the State Police Bomb Squad. Um, your strategy that you just outlined is very encouraging to me, as it takes a very proactive approach and a very serious approach to a very dangerous situation. I'm not naive, though, enough to stand before the cameras today and suggest that we can stop 100% of the illegal use of fireworks in our state. But here in Massachusetts, our combined efforts of law enforcement and public education has been effective. We have fewer fires and fewer injuries from fireworks than other, state, other uh, states across our country. Recently, we were made aware of a study conducted by the state of Washington. In Washington, the state of Washington is about the same size population as Massachusetts. It's a state where most fireworks are legal. And in 2012, the state of Washington had twice as many fires from fireworks as we did in Massachusetts. And very telltaling, for every one injury that we have in our state from fireworks, the state of Washington suffers 45. So there is a very distinct correlation to the importance of our laws. The pyrotechnic companies that operate retail outlets very close to this city, just across the borders, both to the north and south of our state, would like you to believe that certain fireworks are what they call safe and sane. But we know in public safety that the results of illegal use of fireworks, that there is nothing and no firework that can be or should be classified as safe and sane. Even sparklers that burn over 1,200 degrees at the tip are dangerous. No one would give a child a lit match with a tip temperature of 500 degrees, so no one should give a child a sparkler with a tip temperature of 1,200 degrees. Just recently again, the state of Nebraska, where fireworks again are, are allowed, recently banned metal-held sparklers within their state because they saw such a tremendous uptick in the number of injuries that occurred to their residents from the use of sparklers. And just last weekend, just over our border in Connecticut, a 19-year-old Connecticut girl was fatally injured in a fire 
started when someone threw a sparkler through a window in, in her home. I can understand the attraction and the excitement of fireworks. We all can. But we also need to understand the dangers. Children imitate adults, and they think they can use them safely. Nationally, as well as here in Massachusetts, the majority of fireworks victims are children under the age of 14. Somehow, they got their hands on fireworks purchased by adults. We're talking about our children's hands. We're talking about our children's eyes. There are no do-overs when it comes to life-altering injuries. There is no way to rewind the clock. There is no way to take away those injuries. They are permanent. The Office of the State Fire Marshal licenses professional fireworks shooters and ensures we have modern regulations so those shows are safe. We work closely with local fire departments to make sure that the regulations are closely followed. As a result, fireworks mishaps and injuries at professional shows have been significantly, significantly reduced on my watch. So this year, once again, as I have preached every year, I ask you to leave the fireworks to the professionals and enjoy the many shows that will be held around our state over the long holiday weekend. Thank you. Next, I'd like to introduce the Middlesex County District Attorney and a great partner uh, in our law enforcement efforts in Lowell, District Attorney Marion Ryan. Thank you, Superintendent. I'm pleased to be here today with our partners, the Lowell Police Department, as well as the other first responders, Lowell Fire Department, folks from the ambulance companies, the hospital, and members of the city administration. Today's event is part of our ongoing prevention program, particularly now focused on summer safety. Lowell is fortunate to have a number of beautiful recreation areas. We want people to be enjoying those carefree and safe throughout the summer. So I'm particularly grateful to the fire marshal's office, to the Massachusetts State Police bomb squad, and others who've made today possible. Thank you all for being here, for taking this message, and sending it out to the public. Thank you. What we're going to do is a couple of demonstrations of some shots, uh, some items that have been very common throughout the years on the streets of the Commonwealth, even with all of the laws in effect. As the Marshal mentioned, um, the, the practicality of trying to secure or, or control all the fireworks in Massachusetts, it's, uh, it's insurmountable. Um, what you see before you is a seizure from two separate incidents within the past few weeks within Massachusetts. Uh, we are very familiar with every day, every day in this, t in this state, in every town, you have multiple reports of fireworks going off, uh, drawing upon assets, using assets where they could be utilized in a, a better purpose. Um, so what we're going to start off with is a sparkler demonstration. As the marshal mentioned, sparklers burn at approximately 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. We are going to demonstrate for you exactly what occurs or what may occur if in fact these sparklers come in contact with clothes worn by children and or adults as they're burning down. Sergeant Morgan. An aerial display or an aerial cake. Uh, as you can see, it is placed on the ground. What usually occurs when accidents do arise uh, during the utilization of these cakes is individuals who light them, they may think that they have duds where they don't function immediately. And ultimately, someone does inevitably stick their head over that cake. And uh, quite a few times, 
not only within this state, but in uh, every state throughout the uh, United States, we have incidents where the, the shells, the aerial shells, come up and they strike the person, whether in the torso or in the head. So that's what we're going to demonstrate for you today. Sergeant Morgan. The final demonstration is to highlight or illustrate items that people potentially or have referred to as M80s, M-class items, cherry bombs. Uh, we want to make it known that under Mass General Law, Chapter 266-102, these are considered a destructive device in the Commonwealth. It's a 10-year felony, possession of one M80 item. We have uh, some of the most stringent explosives laws or statutes in the United States based upon the bill that passed back in 2010. So we want to, again, show you or showcase the destructive effects of what an M80 or M-class item will do when held. And inevitably, we have accidents every year where individuals don't anticipate how quickly that fuse can burn down and they hold on to it too long and ultimately it takes off their hand. One thing I do want to bring to your attention as well, not only do we have the regular fireworks, but quite often, individuals take these fireworks and they extract the powder. They harvest the powder out of that to make other devices. And uh, clearly it was illustrated back in April of 2013 when we had our tragedy in Boston. So I need that to bring that to your attention as well. Sergeant Hogan. Fire with the hole! Fire with the hole! Fire with the hole! Okay, so that wraps up. And certainly the district attorney, the fire marshal, and the state police bomb squad, as well as the uh, low fire department, where we appreciate everybody's attention. So thank you.